to sleep or die. What if I told you that everyone you know and everyone you've come in contact with, including you, have spent one third of their lives sleeping? Meaning, by the time you are 90 years old, you must have slept for an astounding 30 years straight on without waking. Not convinced, eh? Now, let's do the math. If 24 hours makes a day and 365 one quarter days make a year, then in one year we must have lived for 8,766 hours. On average, we sleep an approximate 8 hours daily. Therefore, in one year we would have slept for 2,922 hours. Finally, if you divide the sleep time over the time we lived in one year, then we must have slept an exact one-third of the time we've been in existence. Even though we are the fantastic sleeping beasts on earth, we are not alone. Sleep is nearly ubiquitous and highly conserved throughout the animal kingdom, which indicates how fundamental sleep is to life. Yet, sleep is one of the most enduring mysteries for scientists, as little is known about the genes and molecular factors that drives us to slumber. Well, not until the early 2019 when a group of scientists announced the discovery of a sleep-inducing molecule in fruit flies. What is more exciting is that they found that this sleep-inducing factor is also protective against infections. Hi, I am Timitope Etibo. This is Life Sci Exposition. Maureen Westin holds the Guinness World Record for the longest time without sleep on a rocking chair. It was without sleep for 18 straight days and 17 hours. However, a 17-year-old high school student named Randy Gardner is a scientifically documented person for the longest time a human being has intentionally gone without sleep, not using stimulants of any kind. Gardner stayed awake for 11 days and 25 minutes. His health was closely monitored throughout the events and became popular among sleep deprivation researchers. Gardner was reported to display serious cognitive and behavioral changes. These included moodiness, lack of concentration and short-term memory, paranoia and hallucinations. After three days, Gardner was getting moody and losing coordination. Bit by bit, his senses were being affected, including his smell. By day 5, he was hallucinating, his brain slipping into a dreamlike state. On the 11th day, when he was asked to subtract 7 repeatedly, starting with 100, he stopped at 65. When asked why he had stopped, he replied that he had forgotten what he was doing. All of this points to the importance of sleep. It is no coincidence that when we are most stressed, for instance, when we feel ill, sleeping is often the first recourse. As a matter of fact, doctors always advise to have a good rest when sick. For a long time, it has been known that sleep deprivation is detrimental to immune function. However, this link is merely a correlation until now. The existence of a sleep inducing factor was first proposed in the 1900s, where a couple of experiments were done in dogs, cats and goats. To simplify, in one of the experiments, well-rested cats received cerebral spinal fluid which are found in the brain and spinal cord from sleep-deprived goats and fell into a profound natural sleep state which lasted 12 to 24 hours. However, when the sleep-deprived cats were infused with cerebral spinal fluid from the same goats that were well-rested, Alas, the cats remained alert, as if they had slept, suggesting a soluble factor in the cerebrospinal fluid that induces sleep and builds up as an animal need for sleep increases. This effect was classically dubbed the Pierron phenomenon, and a search for the sleep-inducing molecule has been known ever since. It is well known that sleep is broadly regulated by two major processes. Number one, the circadian system that times daily sleep cycle, that is, to sleep at night and wake in the day, governed by internal biological clock. And secondly, the homeostatic system that drives the need to sleep by accumulating sleep-inducing substances in the brain.
mechanisms that generate circadian rhythm are now understood on a fundamental level. However, it has been hard to nail down what triggers homeostatic sleep drive. To understand this question, scientists turn to one of the simplest model organisms that are used to understand physiological processes. Using four genetic screens more than 12,000 foot fly lines, which is approximately 1 million flies altogether, and out of over 8,000 genes that were screened for, they found that only one undescribed gene was able to trigger flies to sleep more. They called this gene Nemori, which is Japanese for sleep. Nemori was shown to have minimal effects on circadian rhythm, but may be involved in homeostatic sleep drive. After identifying the sleep inducing gene, the researchers took more measured details of how flies slept and observed that Nemori not only increased how long flies slept, but also how deeply. When exposed to shaking that wakes normal flies, most Nemori mutants had listed. In order to understand how Nemori works, they searched for sleep related genes that might behave like Nemori, but found none. Surprisingly, they noticed that Nemori contains a domain that is characteristic of antimicrobial peptides, which points to immune function. Antimicrobial peptides are known to promote survival of organisms upon infection, largely by killing microbes but in some cases also by modulating other aspects of immune response. Could it be that sleep enhances survival when sick? To test this, they exposed Nemori flies to bacterial infection and found that Nemori reduced the amount of bacteria and that Nemori expressing flies survived the infection better than control flies. Furthermore, when they took out Nemori from flies using CRISPR, it reduced infection-induced sleep. After infection, distinct parts of the fly brain that control sleep lit up with Nemori activity, and flies spent more time sleeping. Sleep-deprived flies also showed extra Nemori expression. At the end of the day, all of these evidences point to the importance of sleep when we are sick. Despite this new knowledge in sleep biology, a plethora of questions remains unsolved. For instance, did survival stem from Nemori itself actually fighting the bacteria directly throughout the body? Or did the whole immune system just get a boost from more deep sleep? Unfortunately, these experiments cannot resolve between these two possibilities. We await future works to address this question. So, the next time you are super sleepy, and I about to brew that pot of strong coffee. A nap might just be the best recourse. By the way, remember that solving this sleep immunity mystery awaits future work. Do you know a way to solve it? If so, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button and notification bell to get live updates on new content such as questions on infection tolerance and resistance and the effect of social media life satisfaction as well as the risks associated with our food choices when we are sick. If you find this video helpful, like and share it with family and friends. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Ciao ciao!